Global mega corporation Nike, which is cooler and more virtuous than you, has made Colin Kaepernick the star of its latest major ad campaign. That's because what real bravery looks like is getting celebrated by almost everyone in power and getting huge money from an enormously, enormously wealthy and influential company. Many regular Americans aren't as impressed, though. Some have already posted videos of themselves burning Nike gear. But before you throw your support to another mega corporation who hates your way of life, consider this. According to reports, Puma and Adidas also pursued Kaepernick before he signed with Nike. So something much larger is afoot. What is it exactly? Jason Whitlock hosts Speak for Yourself on FS1, and he joins us tonight. So, Jason, I read this story. My first thought was of you. I'm going to withhold any more judgment and allow you to lay out what this means. I think that Nike has issues, PR issues. They've been sued for discrimination by both black people and women. They fired a bunch of executives recently. And long before any of that, Nike's had a problem with slave labor, uh, slave labor in Asia. And the people that actually make their shoes, uh, Nike has no problem with their oppression. And so I, I think that Colin Kaepernick aligning with him is a marketing PR ploy by uh, Nike to cover up their larger, bigger problems and to, to feed the left-wing media, so, oh, look, we're friends of Kaepernick. So overlook these years of criticism about the slave labor that makes our shoes and the exploitation that we're perfectly fine with. And then, Tucker, I'll go even a step further. When you look at uh, President Trump's Make America First policies and how they're impacting corporations like a Nike and the, the business they do overseas, go have their uh, materials made in another country for less money and then bring them back into our country without being taxed or punished for that. I, I just think Nike is playing politics here on a number of different levels. And it's a PR stunt that I think is going to blow up and backfire in their face. No different. This reminds me of ESPN uh, naming Caitlyn Jenner the most courageous person in America uh, because she, she had a sex change operation. Uh, I, I think this is cut from that same cloth and how that, doing that, a labeled ESPN is PC and out of touch with middle America. I think this play here with Colin Kaepernick is going to backfire on Nike. So what you're saying, I mean, you're describing something a little more sophisticated than just a kind of reflexive kowtowing to PC sensibility. What you're saying is this is a company that could be attacked on legitimate grounds by critics and on the left for exploiting workers, for being bad for the world, but to avoid being attacked, they pay a kind of indulgence, a tax to the church of PC by making Colin Kaepernick even richer, and they don't get criticized. Is that what you're saying? Without question. And I think this was really a harebrained idea and scheme. It's a sign of desperation. I, I, again, I think it's going to blow up in their face. This is just bad business. And, and, and I, I get it. For a business to move into something this polarizing with yes. sports fans, it's just crazy to me when Nike has made so much money and became this powerful force uh, going with Michael Jordan, who avoided right. politics and understood yeah. that everybody at the end of the day buys shoes. I, you know, the hypocrisy here by Nike is extreme. Uh, you know, using Colin Kaepernick in this way, and I don't blame Colin Kaepernick. He's going to take a check from wherever he can get it. This is Nike using him to cover up for their own internal and external problem. But do you think any, I mean, that's such a smart point. As a business decision, why would you, if you were Nike, especially a company with historically universal appeal, want to narrow your potential customer base to 40% of the country or narrow it at all? Why would you do that? That seems pretty short-sighted. Because there are executives running all over America who basically grew up in the countercultural era of the 60s and 70s, and now they're in positions of power, and they're doing crazy harebrained things with their companies. Again, I I've said it a million times, uh, ESPN eventually thought that doing PC politics was good business. 
and it's just not. They're playing, Nike and a lot of corporations are playing to Twitter way too often. Yeah. They think if we can just make Twitter happy and make the left-wing dominated Twitter happy, we're going to make the world a better place and we're going to make our business better. It's just not going to happen. It's so, it's so smart. It's a theme that you hit it again, again and again, and I'm glad that you do. Social media is changing our world, our society, our brains even in ways that we don't even perceive. Thank you for reminding us of that. Jason Whitlock, as always.